Hi, this is Jay Haskamp, and I'd like to welcome you to another Tech Talk by Frontier Precision. In today's session, we're going to go through the proper configuration for a Verizon Jetpack MiFi device for a secure and stable connection to a Trimble controller. Before we begin, I just want to note that due to any changes by the service provider, availability of settings may change without notice. Also, with the release of new devices and firmware updates to existing devices, availability of these settings may also change without notice. Depending upon the device you are configuring, the web user interface may look different than what is shown in this tech talk, and availability of the settings shown may vary. Always consult your IT staff and or your cellular plan administrator before making any changes to your device. And lastly, Frontier Precision does not sell or support any third-party devices. These are only recommended settings based on customer experiences. If you should have any issues at all with your device, please contact the device manufacturer or the service provider. Now with that said, let's look at some of these recommended settings. Okay, so the best way to change these configurations is to use a laptop and through the laptop's Wi-Fi uh, connect to the uh, the Verizon MiFi device. So to do that, I'm going to choose my little uh, Wi-Fi status icon down here, and you can see I have my Verizon MiFi 6620L um, listed as a potential connection. So I'm going to double click to connect to this. Now I've connected to this Verizon MiFi device before, so the administrative password is already stored on my uh, my laptop but uh, if you're connecting to this for the first time you will see a prompt asking for the password and the password will get you connected to the MiFi device so key that password in um, it should be provided to you by Verizon when you buy the device also with this particular model that I'm using I can check it on the device itself by choosing the Wi-Fi name slash password menu and then it will and then by choosing that it will display it uh, directly on the screen so once connected you can see here I'm connected to this uh, MiFi the next thing to do is to open up your internet browser and in your internet browser type in the IP address in the little status bar up here as follows it's 192 dot one six eight dot one dot one and I'm going to hit enter and this will bring us up to the uh, the administrative or the web UI um, page for our specific device now one thing to keep in mind is there are various uh, MiFi devices out there and it seems to be that there's new ones coming out all the time so what we see in this particular web uh, UI might not be the same as what you may see in your device. Um, this is only for this particular 6620L model. Other devices may look a little bit different, so just keep that in mind. Uh, the first thing we need to do here is pick Sign In up on the top to sign in to the administrative settings. So you can see here, even though I entered my password in for the Wi-Fi, it's going to require me to enter my administrative password again in one more time in order to get into the settings. So I'm gonna put that password in and pick sign in. And now you can see that I'm connected to my device. So the first thing we need to do is go to Jetpack Settings and under the advanced tab you can see when we pick advanced you get this little warning here saying that changing these settings could cause some issues but we're going to pick continue to keep going anyways and the first thing that we want to do is under preferred network technology um, by default this is set to global we want to change this to CDMA only and then the content delivery optimization checkbox we want to make sure that that box is checked then we're going to pick save changes and it's telling me here that saving may uh, cause the device to restart so if it restarts we're going to lose our connection and we'll need to hook back up to it and that's fine so we're going to go ahead and hit confirm and now you can see that the jetpack is restarting so we'll need to just sit tight for a minute and let this thing restart and then we can connect back up to it now that I can see that my MiFi has restarted um, since I've dropped the connection here, 
it actually switched back to my default Wi-Fi. So you can see now that I have this message saying that, hey, wait a minute, we couldn't connect back up. So you may need to go back here and double click on the Wi-Fi again to get connected to it. And then now you can see that it automatically kicks back in. So we've made the first change. Now we need to sign back in using our password that we've been provided. So we're going to key that in and pick sign in. And now we're back, back in the settings. So we're going to go back to Jetpack settings. I'm going to pick the advanced tab and continue just to confirm that these settings have held, which it looks like they have. Now the next step is to go to the Wi-Fi tab. And under the Wi-Fi tab, there's various things that we can configure here. Um, the first thing you're going to see is the Wi-Fi name. So this is the name here that shows up as your um, available connection. And I honestly would suggest um, changing this just so you know that it's, a, uh, it's an identifier, that it's your device. The next thing here is the security. And by default, this is set to WPA2 Personal. Um, this setting is the, probably one of the main things that we need to change. This will not work with TSC2 controllers, and I've also seen it be pretty spotty and, and not work well with TSC3 controllers. So the suggestion here is actually to set the security to none. And now when we set it to none, you can see we get a warning that says anyone can use this uh, Jetpack network and your data plan. WPA2 is strongly recommended. Well, that's not necessarily a huge issue because we can change another setting to, to make sure that that doesn't happen. So I'm going to hit confirm here. And now you can see my security is set to none. I don't have an option to put in a password or a key because with no security, I don't need one. But the next setting down here is the max Wi-Fi connections. You can see by default this is set to 15. What I would suggest to do if this is set to open is maybe leave it to one connection. So this means only one device can connect to your Wi-Fi. So this would be you know, your TSC2 or your TSC3 controller. So once you connect up, no other connections are available. Or you may want to set it to two, meaning you could connect with your, you know, your field controller and maybe your work or personal laptop to hook up to it as well. So one or two would be the recommendations there uh, when you're running with open security. Uh, the next thing we need to do is choose the 2.4 gigahertz band settings um, link here. And you can see here we have the 802.11 mode. And by default, this is set to G and N. Now, G and N will work fine with the TSC3. However, if you have a TSC2, the G and the N setting will not work. So we need to change this to the B, G, and N setting. And notice what happens when I choose that setting. My security goes back to WPA2. So you may actually need to change this first or change it and go back and set it to none and then confirm. So what we're looking for as an end result is to change our name, set our security to open, set our maximum connections to one or two, depending upon what you want there, and the 802.11 setting to show B, G, and N. And if you want a little bit better understanding of what this setting is and what the difference is between B, G, and N, uh, we'll post a link to a document that explains that on our blog where this video will be hosted. Uh, the last thing we need to do is pick Save Changes. And again, it's saying to save these changes, it'll probably have to reset it and lose the connection. So we're going to confirm that. And now we should see the screen pop up and see that our MiFi is restarting. You can see here it says page cannot be displayed because we've lost our connection. Because it restarted, let's go back to Verizon MiFi and try to connect back up to it. You can see it's unavailable because it's not there anymore. So what we really need to do is now you can see we have our FPI MiFi. So this is where we made that um, that SSID change. So we want to choose FPI MiFi and you can name this whatever you uh, wish to name it. And now it's popping up and I'm just going to choose that it's a public network and close. Now you can see I'm connected and it hooks me back up to these settings. Now looking at the settings you can see that all of these changes I made have held. 
I can still go into advance and just double check there and see that this is held. But one thing I want to make um, everyone aware of is that even though this Wi-Fi um, is open and there's no password for the security, if I sign out, okay, and I choose to sign back in, you can see that it's asking me for my admin password. So the open security and having no password is only to connect to the Wi-Fi for the data streaming. If you wish to go back in here and make any changes to any of the settings, it's still important to retain that administrative password that you get by default with your device. The other thing you can do in here is you can actually go in and reset this back to the factory default settings. So for uh, whatever chance if you have any um, issues with any settings and you want to just start fresh, there is a setting in the web UI to revert back to the default settings and then you can kind of start fresh. So it's very important to retain that um, default password that you get from Verizon when you buy the device. And that concludes our tech talk on configuring a Verizon Jetpack MiFi device to communicate with a Trimble controller. I hope that you have found this beneficial and will join us again next time. Thank you.